of you who are not familiar with the Business Council, BCIU was an initiative of President Eisenhower uh, in the mid-1950s to promote citizen diplomacy and people-to-people -people exchange. One of the great uh, initiatives of the White House and the Congress in that period was a heightened involvement of uh, exchanges, professional and personal exchange, with the idea that uh, something about American history where uh, many Americans feel that it's a big country, there's not really much reason to go much beyond our borders. And at the same time, there was this thought that if people from around the world visited uh, they could decide for themselves what um, they could take with them from, from the United States. So literally since that period, there have been tens of thousands of visitors to the U.S. and Americans going abroad under official um, U.S. funded, uh, U.S. government funded program. So we came to life in that, in that period. And um, working with Global Entrepreneurship Week, which is a very um, important effort to try and catalyze um, and encourage uh, entrepreneurship and build a global network, uh, one of many. There's a number of very active entrepreneurship vehicles abroad, um, but this is another one that we think is, is fantastic. And um, as you'll see in a moment, uh, Secretary Clinton has a message that, that she would like to make for the uh, period that we're in this week, Global Entrepreneurship Week. I am delighted to speak to you today as you gather for the Kauffman Foundation's Global Entrepreneurship Week. Your efforts to build new opportunities and businesses are helping to drive economic growth and improve people's lives around the world. You know, Global Entrepreneurship Week will be celebrated in 85 countries by millions of people. So I want to thank the Kauffman Foundation for taking the lead as the largest foundation worldwide devoted exclusively to entrepreneurism. Along with Enterprise UK, you have helped bring this global movement to life and foster growth and opportunity during this difficult period of global economic recovery. The Obama administration is dedicated to boosting entrepreneurism both in the United States and in other countries where talent is widespread, but opportunity often is not. And we are focusing greater attention on women and young people who are too often marginalized, but not only can, must be important catalysts for progress. Ensuring that everyone in society has an opportunity to make the most of their talents and fulfill their God-given potential is critical to widening economic prosperity, as well as the stability and security that goes along with it. So we can't afford to leave out anyone who has an idea, a dream, an invention, or innovation, and the desire to work hard to make that a reality. As President Obama said in his inaugural address, it has been the risk takers, the doers, the makers of things who have carried us up the long, rugged path toward prosperity and freedom. So Global Entrepreneurship Week reflects a sense of collective responsibility to encourage young minds to pursue fresh ideas and unleash the full range of human potential. On behalf of President Obama and all of the American people, thank you for taking on this critically important task and best of luck in building your dreams for a brighter future. So thank you very much. I'd like to now invite uh, Ambassador William Eco. Uh, he and his wife um, arrived in August to start a three-year tour. Um, and a friend of uh, the president, sir, may I invite you to the podium? Well, welcome to Vienna. Very happy to join you today to discuss a subject which is very important to me. In my prior life, as a businessman, as some of you know, most of you may know, I spent the last several years focusing on investment opportunities in the venture capital and private equity markets, primarily focused on alternative energy opportunities. Previously, I spent about 20 years building my own business. So entrepreneurial activity 
runs in my blood. Given what the global economy and particularly financial markets have endured over the last year or two, I know firsthand that it was not an easy time to be an investor or an entrepreneur. There are clear signs that we are, hopefully at least, beginning the ascent from the depths of the financial crisis that has shaken the world economy, and we know that the path is anything but certain. This is why this conference is so critical, so important. A full and sustainable recovery will require a steady stream of entrepreneurs to provide the needed job growth. We know in the United States, we estimate that entrepreneurial activity and small business drives some two-thirds of job growth. And in any recovery, that's what's going to get the recovery going. So we need these entrepreneurs for their constant supply of imagination, to innovate products and services, to address the ch challenges we face globally, not the least of which is the challenge of climate change. American business is largely answering this call. Uh, venture capital money in the United States today is flowing into alternative energy opportunities. Now, it's true the United States holds no monopoly on creativity, and our focus today is on Central and Eastern Europe. Nonetheless, there is something to be learned from the American spirit of innovation. We owe much of our strength as a nation and much of the strength of our economy to this trait. Creativity, invention, risk-taking are hardwired in our DNA. American businesses thrive in the culture of research and development that results. This American ability to invent is nothing new, nor in fact exclusive to America, but it is a characteristic of American corporate culture, a cor characteristic that others, I think, can emulate. I think, that said, I think this uh, spirit of entrepreneurship is something that is shared by all people, regardless of culture. Are we getting a, everybody can hear me still with the fan? Okay. Uh, or natural border, national borders. And entrepreneurial activity can serve as a catalyst to promote economic growth, create jobs, and benefit people around the world. As Central and Eastern Europe begin to recover from this global financial crisis, it will be entrepreneurs who lead the way. Now, others have a role to play as well. Government needs to provide the right balance in regulatory policy, for example. You don't want to over or under regulate. You need to provide an, an environment for businesses to thrive. Uh, rule of law has to, has to exist because businesses, you know, people will not invest where they don't have confidence. Uh, Education is important. NGOs play a role in making sure that people understand that how to take advantage of these opportunities. Venture capital is critical. And lenders are critical, frankly. As businesses start to grow and prosper, they need that access to credit. I've been assured by each of the leading Austrian banks, who are really the lead lenders throughout Central and Eastern Europe, that they are staying the course. They will continue to lend they may not be as aggressive in the foreign exchange lending as they have been in the past where they got into trouble, but they are committed to staying the course and they see that, the net, that this is important as Central and Eastern Europe recovers from this crisis. So I think that while there are many parties that have to play a role and you have to create a conducive environment, uh, there's no question entrepreneurs can lead the way out of this crisis. And so to the extent that we can all think about fostering entrepreneurial activity, We'll, we'll see a recovery coming soon. That's why the work that you're doing here is so important. And, there, and therefore, uh, wel I welcome you and I wish you every success. This is an incredibly important work. Thank you.